Alright, today we're going to be talking about Iceman, and that feels so good to say because I absolutely love this character, and he feels like a whole new champion now. So, this is the Mighty Charge lane. Um, I chose this path because Iceman doesn't rely on any debuffs because his Frostbites are passive, and that's like the main source of his damage output. And you're just gonna see what I'm talking about when I say that he feels like a brand new champion. These synergies that got added for him are just unreal, and this is why. Look at that SP2. I am in like utter disbelief. That was 25 seconds. That was just an absolute massacre right there. I did have the passive fury from the node, which gave me plus 100% attack, but I do feel like even without that, that still would have been some massive damage. And I've proven that before. I made a video like I think a week ago showing him in Realm of Legends that doesn't have any attack increases, you know, like it's just regular it's just like a regular damage showcase and he was doing really really good there so now i'm just going to bring him into act 7 and see how he performs here and spoiler alert he does really really well because these synergies are just so amazing for him we dropped this sp2 it doesn't crit on the last part unfortunately but that was still a ton of damage on the frostbites at least like he i just love i love the new damage man the damage just feels like he is reborn as a character so that was 43 seconds, and that is just really, really impressive for a character that would take like one or two minutes like on those fights before these synergies came out. So let's let's like go away from the damage increase notes for a second. Let's just talk about his base utility. This is the Biohazard lane in 7.1, and he can take this because obviously he is bleed, poison, and incinerate immune. So that means he can take hazard shift as well. He can take bleed 60, poison 60. He can be really recoil masteries friendly as well. There's just a lot that his immunities give him. And not only that, but he is also stun immune in a sense. Whenever he gets stunned, he consumes his ice armor to remove the stun, which is really, really solid. And he also has a damage cap. So whenever he would take more than 5% of his max health, he would cap the damage and sacrifice his ice armor for it. So there is a lot of utility for this man. Um, and look at the detonation. That was 14 frostbites and 75,000 damage. That is just, that is unreal. That is like unheard of. I am so like happy that he is finally just a really strong character in the game. And now this is a Nick Fury on Biohazard, same nodes. This fight does take a bit of a long time just because it is a Nick Fury and he just like has a ton of health. So back to what I was saying, he just has like a lot of utility. It's like a lot of basic utility, but it's still good in, like to this day, in my opinion, you know? Stun immunity is still really rare and it's really unique. Um, his damage cap is also still really rare. Like nowadays when they have like damage caps, it excludes SP3, but Iceman can tank SP3. So that's a pretty big advantage over like the newer champs of today. Look at that SP by the look at that SP2 man. That SP2 is so strong. Like I'm talking and I'm just like seeing the damage again. I'm just like, my gosh, this dude is just crazy. I don't want to like get too excited though. Of course, there are still drawbacks to this champion, like the fact that he does rely on synergies, the fact that you kind of do want the recoil masteries. In my opinion, you do, just because it just it makes everything so much better. It really does. It just adds so much more damage to the champion because he just like he doesn't have any way to increase his attack right so when he gets his attack increased by other sources it is just a massive difference so yeah back to this fight uh we're now in the second the second phase of nick fury so we can just try to finish this off with one sp2 and i think we drop it right here unfortunately oh we do get a big crit that is a really nice crit yeah <laughs> um I've always used Iceman for Nick Fury. It's always a good fight. Iceman is just really solid for Nick Fury. I remember taking down the 6.3 boss with him and it was just absolutely perfect. But yeah, that was a bit of a long fight, but he did it really well. I'm just realizing now that I'm probably stuttering a lot, but that's just because I'm so excited for this video. So this is uh, the 7.4 lane. It is Hazard Shift. Um, this is also a really common node in Path 9 of Alliance War. He can take this perfectly fine in alliance war he can also take the other hazard ship which is bleed and shock he's not shock immune but he is bleed immune so you just have to like play around the the shock phase which is really straightforward to do um this miles is a really smooth fight 
I did get kind of lucky, I do admit, with the, the spider camo. He didn't miss any of my attacks, and I hit that massive 51k crit as well. Like, the dam the damage, man, it's just, it's so crazy. Like, compared to other mutants, it may not be the best, but compared to the old Iceman, it is a massive increase it is a huge increase from like what he used to put out damage wise so yeah we're almost done with this fight we seen to pop one heavy i believe oh no we need <laughs> we need to pop another one actually uh that wasn't enough but you get the point this a really straightforward fight he is just so good for hazard shift that was a minute exactly so now we're on the encroaching stun lane um i'm just going to showcase how he is so good for this node like he is by far one of the best counters for this node. Of course, there's like the newer champs now, like Hercules and all that, that are just like stun immune for the whole fight pretty much. But Iceman's like failsafe is so strong when it comes to stun immunity because he doesn't like pause. He doesn't pause whenever he would get stunned. Like some champs like Jabari Panther, when she gets stunned, she like pauses for like 0.1 second and that can like actually get you punished. But Iceman, he just doesn't like, he doesn't get interrupted. He just shrugs off the stun in like 0 0.0001 seconds and then he just goes back to do it to like doing what he was doing so it's really it's really reliable it's really straightforward and it's just so good because his stun shield like the armor up comes back really fast as well so you will like never not have it by the time the stun comes around so it's just really simple to do this node with Iceman. i remember taking the i think it's no 26 back in the day when it was encroaching stun with Iceman. And he would always just be perfect for it because he is just really good for the node in general. I feel like Encroaching Stun is like the only place where we see stun nowadays. Um, I can't really think of any like anywhere else it's used besides like other champs base abilities. But it's still just important to know that he is still super good for this node. And we just dropped the heavy and that was a pretty nice detonation right there as well. Another quick example of Encroaching Stun is same exact thing. This is just a stealth spidey this time. Um... Yeah, I don't know why I included this. It's literally just the same thing, but I guess it's just now we have class advantage, so it's gonna be even cooler probably. Oh wait, actually no, this is important because one tip that you should know about when fighting encroaching stun is that if you're running the Professor X synergy, before the stun happens, you wanna drop your heavy attack. And because I'm saying that because when your ice armor expires, um the frost bites consume no matter what not even on just the sp2 it's just whenever it expires the frost bites just go poof right and when you do that you don't get the increased attack from like any source it's just like the base detonation of them so that's why you want to do a heavy attack so you at least get some damage back from it you know and that was a weak sp2 just because it this is specialist one so we get decreased attack on your special two by the way but yeah, that was still a pretty fast fight nonetheless. So now this is the Tyranny and Surging Vengeance lane. What that means is that they will throw the SP1, the SP2, and then the SP3 in that order. So Iceman is good for this because he just doesn't take any damage from the SP3 basically. And I feel like that's such a valuable thing to this day because like I said before, newer champs don't really have like a way to tank SP3s because it always like is excluded. For example, Killmonger. Okay, Killmonger, he made, he's not like new, but he's like, old, he's newer than Iceman is what I'm trying to say. His Indestructible does not work for SP3. And I feel like that just gives Iceman more value as a whole. Like, look at this SP3 right here. We're taking like no damage from it. We take 5% of our maximum health and we can heal like half of that back from Adrenaline. So it's just a really good ability. Okay, I just had to include this. This is probably the greatest interaction I've seen, like, ever. It is so hilarious. So, this is, um, Paradox, and it's, like, the Entropic Generator one, where you get increased combat power rate per Paradox charge. And you can just imagine why this is so good. So, Iceman on his SP1 creates, like, a ton of Frostbites, right? And you can just spam that. <laughs> you can just spam that consistently. And so that means that you're just gaining so many frostbites and you're gaining so many like precisions from the synergies. And it just leads to like a massive SP2. You're going to see right here just how massive the SP2 is. Like we're up to seven frostbites. I know that's like kind of common with Iceman nowadays, but it's still just so easy to get when you have like the increased common power rate. And now we're going to drop the SP2 
and we didn't even <laughs> we didn't get to see the detonation because that was like 100k sp2 that was so now we're fighting uh daredevil um same nodes but now we have the comet power rate at the start of the fight as well so it just makes it so much faster and this also has parry vulnerability that's why our sp2 hit so hard in the last matchup but yeah look how many frostbites we're at like already we're already at five frostbites that is insane we have so much we have like so much precision now we have so much comet power rate from the node and it just leads to like a really really fun time so we're gonna drop the sp2 here i believe after we do this combo and we don't get any crits but the frostbite just finishes him off so that is that was 30 seconds that is that is really awesome so now I just want to show this fight just really quickly before we get to like the final fight of the video, which is the Mole Man boss at 7.1. Um, this has foresight and I think counter tactics, but the foresight part is just really fun. It's just a really fun time. You can just drop the SP2 while you have the foresight fury up and it just creates a ton of damage for Iceman. Like any note that increases his attack is just crazy good for him. It is genuinely amazing for him. So we try to go for the intercept right here, which we, yeah, we get it. We drop the SP2. That's that's a lot of damage. And then the detonate just finishes her off. So now we're facing the stealth spidey with the exact same nodes. Um, this fight is a bit longer because I think I do something wrong. Of course I do, but um, yeah, I don't know what I did wrong, but I know I did something wrong. Um, same exact start. I think we just go straight to the SP2 this time. Just because I think I was I had a lot of frostbites building up. Like right there, you can see one combo and we're already at three frostbites. That is amazing. It's like I guess the problem with Iceman that I have is that he is a bit RNG reliant. Um, except if you have one certain synergy with him, which I will get into in a later video because it is quite crazy. And I think it's worthy of its own like entire video. So be on the lookout for that because I'm not done with Iceman just yet. <laughs> But we don't get any crits there, unfortunately. Um, and now he's just... Oh yeah, this is why I took forever, because he's just really stingy with his special attacks. Okay. So it's not my fault. Okay. Maybe I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay. But um, yeah, the fight's almost done. I just... I don't know why he just couldn't finish it up. I dropped the SP1 here, and then it's done. Okay, perfect. That was a bit longer, but it was still a pretty clean fight overall. And last but not least, we have the Mole Man boss in 7.1. This has foresight, it has a ton of health, which is great for Iceman to take advantage of, and also has um, fight or flight as well. So fight or flight is a bit of an advantage here because you can use that for free intercepts, which gives you foresight. So it's a really good thing, like the notice there, it's just really helpful for Iceman, for any character overall, to be honest. So we're building up a ton of frostbites already, so we don't even have to SP1. We can just go straight to the SP2. And I try to get an intercept right here. I miss that one, but I get that one. I drop the SP2 and look at the damage. It is just, that was insane. That was just, that was just amazing. That was so, that was so awesome. Like I am at a loss for words with, that, like, with how good that was. Um, so yeah, he's already down to like 25%. The fight's basically done. We just need to drop like one more SP2 or even one more SP1 at this point, to be honest. And yeah, he's making really, really good time for this fight also. Like, we're only 40 hits in. He's almost done. We just need to get, like, to one more SP2. It's just going really, really well for Iceman. I dropped that one more time, and yep, yeah, that's that's it. One minute flat. That is a really solid time. But yeah, that's going to conclude the Iceman revisit. Um, I guess I'm going to say this is part one because I do have another part coming out. But it's going to be a bit different because we're going to be running another synergy, which I really, really, really am excited to talk about. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on Iceman. Um, you can tell I'm a bit biased, but I, I love the character so much. So yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts and that's going to be it for me.